Welcome to MZTV. I'm Mikey Z, a musician, a content creator specializing in documentary style filmmaking, conversational interviews, and writing and recording my own music. This first video is the first episode of a mini documentary series that I focus on super rad people doing awesome things and sharing their genuine stories. I'm so pumped to be launching my channel and sharing more and more of these videos with each and every one of you. So without further ado, it's the first video, the first episode of a mini documentary series titled Mental Clarity featuring Rafael Cortez Vivas. Enjoy. Uh, my name is Rafael Cortez Vivas. Uh, everyone calls me Raf, though. I was actually born in Mexico, in the same place that uh, Pacifico beer was made, in Mazaclan. So that's an easy way I always try to get people to remember where I was from. Currently, I work for the city of Mesa, and I am a fire and medical dispatcher in training, um, which I think is a pretty cool job. So helping people out when they need help. Oh, childhood dream. Well, I feel like they always change, but growing up in the late 80s, early 90s, and having the name I have, definitely I'm not a Ninja Turtle, which, you know, just wanted to do some, you know, some ninja moves and stuff like that. And, um, but I guess now, if you think about it, maybe I am, um, because I am helping people, whether it's answering a 911 call or, go into a buddy's house to help him, you know, tear out some tile or put in a shower. Just trying to be there for people and hopefully not spread myself too thin. As far as right now, I do think I'm starting to learn to do what I love, um, but I also try to do things that I, that I know that I do love. So, you know, hang out with friends, cook, um, go for adventures, you know, ride motorcycles. Another thing that like, motorcycles have brought to me is another like family so you have your immediate family and I have like my best friends that I've got to meet through motorcycles which is awesome and then I can't tell you like you're talking about like the trip stuff and it's funny because you know if you take a trip in a car and they're pulled over to the side with a flat tire or just their hood up or something most people just go right past them but I've noticed lately like Anytime there's a bike on the side of the road, somebody pulls over and goes, hey, you okay? You good? And I just think that's always a cool thing. Or like pull up at a gas station, old guys come out, oh, my dad used to ride one of these, or I used to ride one of these. So I just always think that's pretty cool too. So like that's that's one thing that motorcycles is, you know, that it's brought to my attention is, you know, everybody either wants to ride one or everybody rides one or has ridden one. As far as like the, my best memory on a bike or best trip on a bike, um, all of them are pretty fun. Probably a couple that stick out are our first trip to Born Free, Born Free 6. It was just a group of 10 of us. We overpacked for this trip that's from Phoenix to LA. And we were packing like we were going across the country. We had a welder, a follow van, a trailer. Um, but we did break down a few times and the Honestly, probably my most fun trip was Texas. We rode to a show in Texas, thousand miles one way, no chaser vehicle, just six guys that had a good time. Yeah. So right now I have two motorcycles that I currently own and one I built um, in 2019. That's uh, a Sportster Chopper. And my other bike is a 2019 lowrider that I found for a good deal during the pandemic because people were dumping stuff. Yeah. Um, but before that, I had another Sportster and I've always wanted to ride motorcycles. I just thought they were cool. Um, so a couple buddies got bikes and then I was like, cool, let me buy one too. And the fun part about that was my first bike. I actually had to hide at a friend's house. 
um, because I knew my family and mostly my mom would kill me. So for about a year, I thought she didn't know that I've had a bike. Only took her about three months to realize that I own a motorcycle, so. But yeah, it's just something I like. So every, every once in a while, I'll get a new bike and enjoy it, rip it around and move on to the next project. I think every bike that I have is fun. Um, I mean, I'd love to get, you know, something a little older, um, but I mean, right now my Sportster, I love that bike. It's like that currently in its current look is what I thought of a few years ago. So I think I bought my first bike when I was 25, 26, somewhere in there. And like I said, I was just thinking of myself and I just wanted a bike to ride around with my friends. And slowly when everyone started finding out, they were like, it's fine, just, you know, be careful, you know, which is which is awesome because that means that they actually care about me. So if they don't want me to, to get injured or anything like that, or, and still now, you know, if I go on a trip, you know, everybody always tries to check in on me and, you know, do, do the find my phone. And uh, yeah, so I have a mom and a dad um, and I have two older um, siblings, a brother and a sister. Like we are a not typical, but typical Hispanic family. Um, you know, we do Sunday dinners, um, every birthday party, we all try to try to have a little tradition. And, you know, we I think we talk to each other almost every day or if not every other day. Um, but yeah, we're super close. Everyone has like their, you know, mid twenties doesn't care about anybody but themselves kind of thing. And at that time I was, you know, partying too hard and having too much fun. And um, something that kind of, you know, flipped the switch for me and made me start realizing that, hey, I'm not the center of the universe um, was a blessing and a curse, um, getting a DUI. And um, having your mom take you back and forth to Tent City in the morning and pick you up at night to go to work and stuff like that. Um, and I think that was the, the found, it sounds weird, but that was the foundation of me getting a better relationship with my parents. And since then, and that was, I was 22. So, um, so since then, you know, I, you know, try to cut out any of the, you know, nonsense and things like that. But yeah, that was part of the, the beginning of the, what you know kind of relationship i have with my with my parents now and then that also kind of helped me learn what friends are friends what friends are acquaintances and what friends are family yeah so it kind of you know was that that tipping point of cool this is where people stand and this is where people stand with you so yeah so that was that was probably the the best Thing, the best worst thing that could happen to me. And that's the thing that kind of baffles me sometimes when you hear that people get multiples of them. And of course, this was pre-Lyft, pre-Uber, or anything like that. So I was like, oh, it's fine. I can, you know, not too far. Well, literally, like when I got pulled over, the cop's like, well, what's your address? And I like turn around, I'm like, oh, see that light that's on right there? Yeah. Left my bedroom light on. And he's like, oh, you're an idiot. <laughs> At the time he was, you know, I think nine when he had the surgery. So prior to that, he was getting like headaches and, you know, things like that with his vision and missing school a lot. And then, so they took him to a specialist. They found out that he had, his spinal cord was pushing too hard against um, it, in the stem of his brain. So it was not allowing fluid to go back and forth. So um, they decided to do the operation and it just so happened to land on my birthday. So, you know, spending your 25th or sorry, 35th birthday in, you know, a hospital, um, not the most fun place to, to have a birthday, but it was kind of cool to see like, you know, I made um, <laughs> family shirts with everybody. So we did, um, I had my friend uh, make these shirts for us. So D uh, Diego's shirt said top dog. And then all of our sh other shirts said Diego's dogs. He's always loved dogs. So I just thought it was something cool that we could all wear in the hospital together and, you know, show that we were there for him. Um, but like other family members, like extended, like my aunts and uncles and stuff like that, we all stayed there. And then 
found out he was fine after surgery and thought that was super rad. And then uh, my roommate knew it was kind of a hard, heavy day for me and stuff. So actually after that, he's like, oh, let's go get a beer. And he's like, let's go to Casey's. You love Casey's. I'm like, yep. Yeah. So we went to Casey's and then found out there was my other family, which is my really close friends, um, decided to have a surprise birthday and surprised me there, which I thought was like the icing on the cake to the, to like, not a great day, but you know, a good day. So I thought that was kind of cool. Mental clarity is just finding something to make yourself happy, whether it's, you know, going for a ride because you had a bad day at work or going to meet some buddies to go for a ride to just have fun or, you know what, I feel like making dinner tonight. Cool, I mean, make something crazy and delicious and share it with people. Like, just finding the simple things that like, you know, help you check out of the state that you might be in. I think put yourself in a better state of mind. Just continue to motivate myself to be better um, and hopefully motivate other people around themselves to be um, better, kinder, and like, you know, I get super excited when I see friends doing really well and see, you know, family doing well and stuff like that. So I think that's that's kind of a cool thing. Like, I guess try to be more people's hype man. When my nephew had that surgery um, the next year, I was like, well, it happened on my birthday. So why don't we, and I asked him, I was like, hey, would you be okay if we try to raise money for the neuroscience um, area of the Phoenix Children's Hospital? And, you know, when a 10-year-old says, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. So I was like, okay. So I went on, you know, their website and um, created a link and a page for, you know, friends to donate to. I just thought it'd be kind of a cool idea to, you know, if somebody can give five bucks, 10 bucks, whatever. Um, so kind of in the honor of him and, you know, the great people that worked at that hospital and everything like that, um, for them to, you know, see that, you know, that made his day when, you know, a dog would come by the room or they would have, um, you know, they have little video contests on the TVs and stuff like that that they can watch and call into. So it just meant a lot that that, that hospital does all that for them. Um, and so we have a fundraiser, we do it. I've been doing it the last two years. Um, I just think it's something cool. Basically, I would see on like Instagram or people's Facebook and they'd be like, oh, happy birthday, you know, just, you know, jump in real quick and say happy birthday to you. And I'm like, you know what, it'd be cooler, if, you know, instead of you wishing me happy birthday, how about you put a dollar towards this? And the, you know, last year, I think I raised like 450 bucks, which I thought was awesome. Like I didn't expect, I was like hundred bucks, gold, <laughs> hit it. I thought that was awesome. So. Um, this year, I have it open again, and so far, I I was like, okay, let me just be crazy and be like, okay, I'll do $100 for every year I'm going to be this year, so 37 so $370, and hit that goal in a day. So then I had to bump it up and hit that goal again. So now I haven't even moved the goal again, just because whatever goes above what it is right now, I just think it's awesome. Um, and like I said, it's 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 pretty cool that the people that are around me um, are donating money to something that I um, feel pretty passionate about. So thanks so much for watching. I am so excited to continue to upload more and more content to the channel like this. Uh, if you know someone who should be featured on my channel in a similar way, please feel free and reach out. I am always interested in hearing about great people. A special thanks goes out to Rafael for sharing his story and Diego's story and providing us with the information to show support to the Phoenix Children's Hospital. If you liked this video and want to see more videos like it, don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to be notified of all new content as it's released. Thanks for tuning in to MZTV. I'm Mikey Z. We'll see you in the next one.